Standing out at Bantamweight is hard. A combination of battle-tested veterans, confident rising talents, and legends of the smaller weight classes leaves no fat in its top 15. Unranked contenders like Sean O'Malley, Timur Baliev, and Adrian Yanez tend to dominate the conversation for upcoming prospects, so I would like to take a look at someone slightly less hyped today. Fighting out of Plainview, Texas, by way of LA, California, USA, here is Jonathan Dragon Martinez! Jonathan Martinez presents many of the looks that southpaw strikers typically prefer, with a few noticeable exceptions. Kicking is Martinez's best game, and he does so with great diversity. As expected, he has a powerful body kick and head kick, which he will flick up with little tell or setup. Martinez makes particularly good use of the front kick as well. His kicks snap upward and straight to dig into his opponent's stomach, rather than the typical teep's push. These front kicks serve to keep range, close distance, and wind his opponent. Kicks also set up almost all of the rear hand striking Martinez does. Typical southpaws, particularly kick heavy ones, favor the left straight for how well it blends with the initial motion of the left kick. Martinez almost never leads with the left hand, and it is almost never straight. Outside of some counter lefts on the back foot, his left hand is thrown as a wide hook. He uses this hook often as he comes down from a left kick to the body or head, hoping to swipe their chin as their hands drift away to deal with his kick. Martinez makes use of his lead hand quite a bit for an open stance fighter. He has a good southpaw jab and can use it to prod or skewer an over-aggressive opponent. When engaged in the hand fight, he will often look to land his front kick. Another technique Martinez has used effectively is his knees. He doesn't often lead with knees or throw switch knees against the fence like we usually see, but instead looks to intercept on the open side. These can be used against takedowns or to punish a predictable slip. As he lands, he will use the aforementioned wide left hook and or dig underhooks to enter the clinch. The double forearm guard is the base of Martinez's striking defense. This guard is often not favored in the MMA due to the small gloves, which fail to provide the mass that 16 ounce gloves do. It serves him well for single strikes and short combinations, but extended striking offense and pressure often ends with an opponent landing on him. Bodywork is an opening of note from this guard, especially with his limited movement. He also has a habit of backing straight up to the fence, which has had strikers as limited as signs push him back. Improvements in his ability to grab a clinch and the addition of a check right hook have helped to cover this weakness. The Almeida fight saw him implement his shoulder in his defense as well, but his head movement remains limited. Martinez is quite rigid and tall in his stance, and it can show in his runecraft. Runecraft almost always involves leaving your stance, even if momentarily, and Martinez doesn't often open up his stance to do so. This leads to a weakness in his offensive ring cutting. Most notably, Pinyon was able to circle in one direction for large portions of the fight with Martinez following. While being less able to close distance on a hurt opponent can make one a less dangerous finisher, Martinez doesn't seem too bothered. His A game is his kickboxing, and he rarely finds himself being hurt on the outside and needing to close the distance. The double black lines in the octagon are sometimes used as an indicator for how far away from the fence one is, and they are revealing for how Martinez likes his spacing. He will rarely cross the lines to unload offense, instead fighting within them and picking away. Coming into his last fight against Davy Grant, Martinez was 4-2 in the UFC. A decision loss to Andre Sukmantov on his debut, and a highly disputed split decision loss to Andre Ewell, in which 13 out of 13 media members scored it for Martinez. For the winner by split decision, Andre, Mr. Highlight Ewell! Okay, I take back what I said. I'm going to talk more about judges. That's ridiculous. Well, I've been saying that. Man. Anybody saying that that is three rounds to Yule, that's, that's criminal. He had just won a decision over Thomas Almeida, his toughest test so far, and looked dominant doing so. All of this led him to be a sizable favorite over Grant, who was seen as a step down. Martinez looked like the minus 310 favorite he was early in their fight, dropping Grant at the end of round one. Round 2 saw Martinez drop behind in the strike count though, and halfway through the round, he was caught. In retrospect, parts of the loss make sense. Delayed and loopy shots from extended combos have been the strikes that have given Martinez problems in the past. The shift that Grant started his combo with seems to have closed more distance than Martinez realizes, and the right hand to the body drew out one of Martinez's big looping lefts. 
When I first took a more extended look at Jonathan Martinez's career after the Saints fight last August, I thought he would be a future top 15 fighter. Even in such a competitive division and coming off the loss to Grant, I still think this is possible. Factory X is a great team, and Martinez has shown additions to his game almost every time he fights. He maintains and refines the strengths that he came in with, such as shot selection, efficiency, and cardio. At only 27, he has some time. His upcoming bout with Marcelo Rojo is a replacement opponent after Nathaniel Wood pulled out of their previously scheduled fight. The matchmaking with Wood makes me feel the UFC is still high on his future. Wood is also considered a fighter with potential, although he is coming off his own prospect versus prospect loss to Casey Kenny. Rojo is a clear step down from his previous opponents, and Martinez should score a clear victory if he is to continue as a contender.